believe that uh, nothing changes in the things you believe in. And I want to believe if nothing changes, your publicly known stand on the fight against corruption will continue being so even when you join the ministry, if you are approved. And in view of that, you do know the problems that pervade the power sector, especially in regards to the cost of generation of power and what is offloaded to the Kenya Power and Lighting Company. That uh, independent power producers in this country, over the years since the early 60s and 70s, to date, continue to sell very expensive power to KPLC, while that power that we get, we generate from Kenjan, including the green power in Olkaria and uh, uh, Marsab between power, the solar farms in northern Kenya, are much cheaper. Will Kenyans or can Kenyans trust you that when you take office, should you be approved, that you will literally do what they call biting the bullet and fight the power cartels in power generation and uh, uh, sale with the PPA agreements that are there to make sure that Kenyans eventually can enjoy lower costs of power. Because there is power that is cheaper and it's there. But we are still on thermal energy when we have cheaper geothermal energy, we have cheaper wind energy, we have cheaper solar energy. Can we uh, get that assurance from you that you can bite the bullet, relook at many of those contracts, of course, within the law that were procured corruptly at the, to the great detriment of the people of Kenya? You hold, oh. we'll take another one, Junet. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to put to the nominee that, uh, Mr. Speaker, the nominee is somebody known to me very well, having been his whip for now two, three years in parliament. And there is somebody who believes, the way I know him, he stands with what he, on what he believes. But having said that, I want to, info, to tell him that working uh, in parliament, the way we have worked in parliament together as a whip and a minority leader, and working in the executive are uh, two different things, two different ball games completely. Having said that, I want to ask him that there are issues that are of energy in nature that require immediate attention. For example, issues of uh, electrification. You know very well, nominee, that there are places you know and I know who have not seen electricity since God created Kenya. They are still in darkness. You know very well that those places have suffered quite some time and they need urgent help, attention. But promises have been given year in, year out by people who have taken up jobs like the way you are taking. So what Marshall plan or what measures are you thinking of to help in the next three years, those areas that have not seen light, not the, the light of God, but the light of human being, who have not seen it, what are you planning? Secondly, that is last mile. My final question is, this country, the way it is now, and you, the, the, your predecessor, the nominee that was holding your docket, has come here to be vetted on another, for another docket. He has said that the networks and the systems of the electricity has, the, has gone down because of uh, non-repair or something like that for many years. So it requires a lot of money to be upgraded. And I asked him about these uh, shutdowns that happen in the country that affect airports, that affect uh, even hospitals sometimes. I am praying that it does not happen when you are the minister, if you are approved. But if, what are you thinking? What are you planning to do about that matter? Because Kenyans are sick and tired of missing electricity without any notice. Thank you very much. You can answer those. Yes, uh, Honorable Speaker. Let me start uh, with the Honorable uh, Majority Leader's question about corruption within the 
energy sector and whether I am prepared to deal with it. Honorable Speaker, my stand on corruption also remains unchanged. I may not be an angel, but I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, throughout my life, yes, I have fought uh, very, very seriously against corruption in all its manifestations. Honorable Speaker, there are two problems with the matter of the IPPs from where I sit. And I want to explain a little bit. First and foremost, our energy sector is has undergone or is supposed to be undergoing what we call unbundling. Unlike many other jurisdictions which have got a vertical uh, uh, integration uh, kind of structure, our sector has been unbundled and therefore we have got agencies or entities that do the, the, the drilling of the wells if it comes to geothermal. There are entities that do the generation of, of, of power itself, entities that transmit, ultimately entities that distribute to the consumers. Uh, Honorable Speaker, we have these IPPs largely at the generation level, where they compete with state entities such as Kengen and to some extent even GDC, and I'll come to that later again. Honorable Speaker, when it comes to the point of generation, I have noticed a problem that I will have to tackle head on. One, you know that in our mix of energy sources, geothermal is one of the clean energy sources and the cheapest. In fact, Honorable Speaker, Kenya is lucky. It is the sixth largest uh, source of geothermal and in the world. In the world, Honorable Speaker, we are lucky because if you look at, if you have, if you had a look at a, a satellite image or picture of the Earth, we fall within what you call the ring of fire. Those are areas where we have got geothermal resources worldwide. Kenya happens to be within that uh, region, and therefore, we are blessed as a country to have geothermal resources that could help our energy be among the cheapest, Honorable Speaker. But what do you see? GDC, which is supposed to do what we call uh, uh, de risking, yes, because not every private player can do the drilling of the wells. So GDC is supported by taxpayers' money to do the drilling and therefore allow the sites to be commercially utilized by other players, including Kenjian. But now you find that GDC has dug the wells, they have identified the uh, they, they, have, they have got the sites which are ready for, for development commercially. And you find that licenses for a number of those sites have been given to private entities, these so-called IPPs, a number of whom are not utilizing the sites. They have kept them for purposes of spe speculation. And therefore starving Kennedy, which has got excess capacity of opportunities to generate more power, or geothermal power for that matter. Okay, so the country is losing on that account alone. Persons who have been given licenses, what we call geothermal concessions, and they are holding those licenses, which are public assets in my view, whilst Kenjian, which is a publicly owned entity, at least that's by 70%, has the capacity, the expertise, the resources, is not able to get access to those sites to be able to generate for us energy. So that I will have to deal with. But I will have to do, deal with them in a, by way of first engaging with the Attorney General to see what we can do, what we can do about these licenses that are remaining idle without necessarily exposing the country, of course, okay, uh, to litigation and the likes. But eventually to see to it that in the new dispensation, if such licenses are to be issued, there must be conditions that you get a license, but you have got certain terms within which to play. That is one. Two, it is this animal that we call take or pay. These are IPPs. 
which have been given, uh, which, which have signed PPAs, the power producing agreements, with the Kenya Power and Lighting Company. And uh, the agreement is such that whatever they generate, you either take it, or if you don't take it, you still pay for it. So really, that is not sustainable. And they are very, very, very long-term agreements. Farm running to as long as 20 years. Again, I will have to engage the office of the Attorney General on how to deal with this. But eventually, of course, I'm, I'm aware that there is currently a moratorium on the uh, engagement of IPPs following the presidential tax force on PPAs that was established earlier in 20, 2021. Even if that moratorium is lifted eventually, we shall have to ensure that whatever PPAs we get into do not put us in that or in such a situation. As a matter of fact, my view is that eventually, because currently we have a very robust legal framework, since the enactment of the Energy Act of 2019, one of my first duties within 100 days, if I am lucky to be approved, would be to ensure that the requisite regulations are brought to fruition, because there are, there are different stages of processing, so that the country can benefit fully, can reap the full potential from this uh, robust uh, legislative framework. But then, if, that, if it comes to that, I foresee a situation where this country will not need this kind of lopsided agreements. We may actually want to, to have an energy auction kind of situation, where you produce your, generate your energy, take it to the auction floor as it were, and then we buy when we need it as, as, as consumer through KPLC, of course. Okay? That is a futuristic uh, view, my, my honorable speaker. Let me, let me quickly go to the next question, because I'm trying to be, OK. Uh, yes, I understand Honorable Jeanette's uh, view that the executive is not like parliament. I'm here to experience that, because Honorable Speaker, you know, I have never worked in the executive <laughs> throughout my life, throughout my life. You will get to learn. I, yes, yes, so I will get to learn. But, and I'm a first learner, I believe, Honorable Speaker. So I don't have any qualms that I will be able to fit in uh, fairly well. Honorable Speaker, the immediate issues, which are of concern to nearly all members of the National Assembly, I being one of them, at least for now. The issue of rural electrification, the issue of last mile. Honorable Speaker, I said from the outset that our energy sector is supposed to have been unbundled. But I must add that that unbundling is not yet complete. Why do I say so? You still find Kenya Power and Lighting Company competing with REREC in last, last mile connections. Honorable Speaker, Kenya Power and Lighting Company is a publicly listed company is supposed to be running commercially. It's supposed to be profit motivated, if you ask me. And therefore, it cannot be able to do what NEREC was envisaged to do. That is to extend power. Nominee. Yes. I want to guide you. Yes. You have been nominated to be the CS energy and petroleum. Instead of pontificating on what they are, tell us, if you are confirmed, what you want to do with them. That will be your vision, and that will be your message to the country. Because when you engage in a, a complaining type of narrative, it doesn't give hope to the country. Let me endeavor to give hope now to the country. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, therefore, in. in Mr. Speaker, mm -hmm. Mr. Yes. Speaker, the nominee is trying to shed off the opposition leadership slowly. 
So he's, 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 no, he's, he's said he's, what's, the, what's the energy called load shedding? He's <laughs> shedding. He said he's a very fast learner. So <laughs> he's, now he's, he's learned already. Thank you for yes. the guidance from the speaker. Yes. Uh, let me say this. Really, Even in, those uh, parastatals you're talking about, they're going to, to be under your watch. Okay, so let me you say tell this. us what you want them to be. As a, as a policy uh, direction, yes. I would endeavor, first and foremost, to separate or to reduce the overlap okay, in the functions of KPLC and REREC. Okay? And uh, to empower REREC fully to be able to undertake the mandate of last mile connections. Okay? Uh, so that KPLC can concentrate, can focus on its commercial uh, function, business. That better, Honorable Speaker. You are trying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, finally, Honorable Speaker, on Honorable Jeanette's question, it is indeed true that we have got uh, fairly uh, uh, dilapidated infrastructure, especially for transmission. Uh, again, you, you must also understand that uh, these are legacy problems before the coming into being of Ketraku, oh, it was the sole duty of ma or mandate of KPLC to do the whole business from generation to distribution. Uh, some of this infrastructure was inherited and uh, uh, some improvements have been done but there's still room for uh, further improvement, especially if we have to take electricity uh, uh, I mean, uh, optimally uh, to those who need it. Honorable Speaker, we have situations where we are not able to evacuate power from the generators, okay, to the end user because of lack of transmission capacity. That's something I'll be working closely with the agencies under my, in my docket to be able to, uh, to fast track the modernization of the infrastructure. And especially when it comes to the last mile connectivity, we are going to work closely with REREC uh, 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 together with KPLC again uh, uh, by way of uh, engaging with the development partners uh, to be able to finance this process. I'm aware, Honorable Speaker, before I conclude, that there was a proposal in the, the now defunct uh, uh, Finance Act 2024 for some money for each constituency, uh, but uh, as a matter of fact, 50 million shillings. In the budget, yes. In the budget, yes. Uh, now that has been removed in the week of the withdrawal of the finance uh, bill 2024. That, but let me assure my colleague members and the public generally that even with that, all is not lost. We are going to work uh, very systematically with the REREC and KPLC uh, to engage the development partners uh, to help us uh, finance uh, this function. I indeed, even as we speak, there is a project going on which is being funded by the World Bank, okay, uh, in terms of extending powers to those areas where the national grid has not reached, what we call the off-grids. And they have been very helpful, Honorable Speaker. I must commend uh, the management of both KPLC and REREC, because as we speak, there are islands on, the, on Lake Victoria, which previously had no power. And since the national grid cannot be extended to those areas economically, they have resorted to the off-grid uh, power production, which is really helping those areas. We want to extend this to other areas, especially the far-flung areas of northeastern, okay? Yes, to use solar power uh, uh, to be able to light uh, up those areas. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Naisula? To the nominee, there has been talk about breaking Kenya Power's monopoly. I want to hear your view. This is a conversation that Kenyans have had for a very long time. Shouldn't Kenya have a choice, depending on your, you know, the costs, the operational efficiency, and all that, whether people should um, be able to have a choice? The second question is that uh, the Auditor General revealed issues related to meters specifically the absence of check meters, malfunctioning check meters, and inconsistencies between check meters and the main meters. And that is why people get a different bill 
it doesn't it doesn't match and so i wanted to ask these are the cartels we have discussed for the last two days people you know who don't who don't want this country to move forward and how do you intend to deal with these electricity cartels and address this irregularity in the metering yes nelson will take a bundle before you unbundle. Honorable Wanda, you are heavily opposed to the G2G deal. Now, if this House approves you, you are literally going to oversight the same G2G uh, arrangement because it's still in progress. Has your position shifted, uh, or will your position shift if this committee approves you? Posing, take the third one as well. Yeah, thank you, Speaker. Honorable uh, Wandai, it's a big problem in the entire Western Kenya in terms of clean power, power uh, blackouts. The entire Northern Kenya, I mean uh, Western Kenya, that is from uh, Nyanza, uh, South Rift, and North Rift. If should you get uh, the favor of the House, how will you tackle that very fundamental issue that is almost historic? Number two, Honorable Wandai, where is Tal oil? in Turkana. Go and find out where that animal is. Should have actually produced oil in Kenya. <coughs> Should be an uh, oil producing country. But it disappeared. There's a lot of money that has been sunk and nothing is going on. Where is Talo oil? Thank you, Speaker. Okay, let me endeavor to answer these three. Are very short, we can take f the next Kikaria. Wow, you make a mouthful. Those are four, and they're all very short. <laughs> you should answer them as with the brevity the same way they are asked. Uh, thank you, <coughs> uh, Speaker. I just want to follow up on what uh, uh, Naisula was talking about, about metering. This just uh, may maybe having been in the energy sector for a while, maybe you need to consider REREC going to the point of even metering uh, a customer. Because what happens is that REREC is given the option to take that drop of a wire to a customer. But now they leave the metering to KKPLC, who never take it. And we have over like three years. You take three years before you are metered. I think it is important for you to look at uh, the metering being done by REREC, and then REREC can be able to inform uh, KPLC for purposes of them now starting to, uh, to, to do the charging. Uh, but uh, w uh, there, there is this question of uh, c uh, customers make applications. Then it takes too long to a point that we encourage illegal uh, contractors to come and put uh, uh, lines and transmission. And then when KPLC realizes there is that, the first thing they do is to go and bring down all the poles Yet, I, I, and my committee then had to go to Navaholo, where they, they were to be paid 3.5, and they took too long only for somebody else uh, to come in to, to do that. I think it is important for you to address uh, the issues uh, ailing uh, KPLC, so that we don't, and KPLC is a good, uh, is a good, by the way, in the Energy Act 2019, we do, the, the Kenya KPLC is not a monopoly. By the way, anybody can, can apply and get a license for them to be able to do uh, distribution of, K, uh, of uh, power in the country. And that is in the act. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Okay, Honorable Speaker, thank you. Uh, let me start with the Honorable Naisula. And I, and I, I agree with the Honorable uh, Gikaria. Uh, the 2019 Energy Act has actually laid the basis or foundation for other players to come in the energy distribution space. But even as this happens, because it only happen again once we have put in place the requisite uh, uh, regulations, the subsidiary legislation. But even as this happens, Honorable Speaker, we still need a robust KPLC, and I'll say why. <clears throat> KPLC, because of the legacy, of course, issues, 
has got an elaborate infrastructure layout across the country. The competencies, the personnel, and so on and so forth, the technical capacity to do what it is supposed to do. In any event, uh, KPLC actually is the revenue collector, okay? The revenue that goes all the way up to the upstream, the transmitters, the generators, and so on and so forth. So we still need to ensure that a KPLC is run uh, 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 optimally, is efficient, is effective, even as we open that space of distribution to other players, as envisaged under the Energy Act 2019. What I foresee us doing going forward, and I will have discussions with my team if I'm approved, is that we may want to create zones, okay, for purposes of optimal utilization of these uh, resources, so that we avoid uh, conflicts if and when this uh, 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 process uh, begins. And therefore, in short, the monopoly by KPLC is no longer entrenched in law. It is essentially a matter of practice, and we shall deal with it in the fullness of time. Two is the question of faulty meters. This I will have to inquire more about, because what I have been briefed is that we have had problems in procurement of both meters, actually of all, really, of all items. Yes, but meters of Mosul and transformers. What has happened is that these cartels that Honorable Chunga talked about, and Honorable Kwaech, I think, uh, uh, these cartels have become so pervasive, Honorable Speaker, that they can't allow a tendering process to proceed to, to conclusion and awards to be made without creating roadblocks. We all know for sure that KPLC being a publicly listed company with majority shareholding being government is governed by the Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act of 2015, which act, as we all know, Honorable Speaker and members, gives room for tenderers, <laughs> yes, for bidders, uh, to lodge complaints at every other stage. But that is being abused, Honorable Speaker, by entrenched cartels. And we shall have to work closely with my colleagues in the ministry to deal with this menace, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Koech, on the matter of G2G G G deal, the G2G G deal, it's indeed true, Honorable Speaker, uh, that uh, I, alongside my other colleagues, who are vehemently opposed to this scheme. Hmm? But let me tell you, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, that was then. And I was doing it as a, my duty to put government to check. I think you already answered that question when you are responding to the deputy speaker. But this is specific. So on this okay. G2G, Honorable Speaker, yes, okay. I am aware that it is running up to end of 2025. That gives me ample time to go and study uh, its impact, its workings, and understand it, and for me to be able to offer uh, appropriate uh, uh, guidance, Honorable Speaker. The Honorable Kosei, my chair, my good chair, the matter of power outages or inefficiencies in the Western Kenya Belt. Well, but it is more pervasive in the Western Kenya. But I'll explain why. Sometimes you can have a blackout for 12 hours. I have already. I have already engaged officers, of course informally, in the ministry. And if I am approved, if I am eventually appointed as CS Energy, I am going to fast track the development of transmission lines, okay, with the requisite capacity to evacuate power and take to the consumers, not only in Western Kenya, but across the country. And in Western Kenya specifically, I'm going to ensure that the Tarquel or Tum Kitale line is completed and commissioned in the shortest time possible. 
that will deal with power issues in Pokot, in Kitale, in all that area. I will also ensure similarly that the Kibos or Kisumu, Kakamega, Musaga line is also completed. Similarly, the Narok Bomet line has to be completed within the shortest time possible for the entire southern Nyanza region, including Kisi and Nyamira counties. And Bomet, of course, southern Nyanza includes Migori, Koma Bay, and, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and the islands, <laughs> yes, in Leon Lake Victoria. So this is something I will actually give utmost priority, Honorable Speaker. Northern Kenya is, of course, at the heart of this strategy. As we speak, there is a line from Luangalani to, to Masabit that has to be completed similarly in record time, and the line from Masabit to Isiolo, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, the second limb of this question by Honorable Kosing is on the matter of Talo oil. Honorable Speaker, this project is not dead. It could have taken a break but I've taken it upon myself, if I'm appointed, to ensure that it is revived. Because tallow oil is on the ground. What it lacks is the requisite financial capacity to be able to commercially uh, uh, develop the oil reserves in the lower Lokichar, in the, in the south Lokichar uh, basin, Honorable Speaker. We are going to work closely with tallow oil with the guidance of the Attorney General to get to source for a strategic partner who can bring in some financial uh, capital to be able to have this project completed. But again, time is of essence, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, you know that Kenya is a signatory to the Paris Agreement on carbon emissions. Kenya is a signatory to the Paris Agreement on carbon emissions. And if you recall the outcome of the Conference, the UN Conference on Climate Change, COP27, in Egypt in 2022. If we don't move with speed and extract this oil in Turkana, we may be time bad because we shall face serious restrictions, including even restrictions from potential financiers. Because we, the, the world is moving steadily from fossil fuels to clean.